Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the second shelf. It's April, at least almost. <laughs> I'm not sure when this video will go up, but it will be before April. I think it will probably be Sunday, the 28th, uh, still. Uh, but April is almost there, and if you are watching BookTube, then you know there's uh, in only one event really going on in April that everybody is participating, and that's Aussie April, of course, which means uh, reading Australian literature. We try to do our best throughout the year, but in April, we try even more. <laughs> um, it's, I think, the third or fourth year that this event takes place in April, and it's organized, as always, by Jacqueline from Six Minutes for Me and Doris from All the Books. And I will leave Jacqueline's announcement video down in the description box. You can have a look, but there are no prompts, there's no challenge or whatever. The only thing is, please read at least one Australian author in the month of April, if possible more. Uh, so I looked at, uh, you know, relatively recent releases. I also looked at books from Australian authors that I might want to reread. And I came up with the TBR. Yeah, it's the, this channel is going completely crazy because... Two, two days ago, I filmed a Friday Reads for the first time ever, and now I'm doing a TBR. But as you know, when it's about these kind of topics, I sometimes do TBR videos. So anyway, these are the books that I'm planning to read uh, during Aussie April, and they are all, of course, Australian authors. And the first book I want to talk to you about is a collection of essays, Rebecca Giggs, Fathoms, The World in the Whale. Is that true? The World in the Whale. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Why am I doubting myself? Published last year, but this year um, um, longlisted and now shortlisted for the Stella Prize, which is the big uh, book prize in Australia for female authors. And it's fiction and nonfiction, poetry and everything in one prize. I will leave a link to the website of the Stella Prize uh, in the description box because it's, it's a really good way of, you know, trying to find um, uh, Australian authors. I have to say not all of them, uh, when they are for the Stella Prize, are available uh, outside of uh, Australia. I'm still trying to get, um, I think, one or two from five years ago, and they're just not... You know, and there no is not when there's no ebook available either, uh, then it's tough. But anyway, you should have a look at the Stella Prize, and this one I'm gonna read with Heidi from My Reading Life. Um, uh, Rebecca Giggs is a scientist. She studied ecology, and uh, she is writing uh, uh, feature pieces about her field. Um, I remember a piece she wrote in the Atlantic about bats. Why we are afraid of bats. <laughs> It was quite a funny piece, I remember that. And this book, of course, like the title said, is about whales. So uh, she travels all over the world uh, to talk with people who are in the conservation business, but also people who hunt uh, whales. She looks at how the changing environment um, uh, affects the whale. And I mean... The whale, I think it's it's just such a, such a fascinating animal, and uh, yeah, I, I'm really looking looking forward uh, to this one and reading it together with Heidi because Heidi is a scientist as well, so so everything that I don't understand she will be able to explain to me, <laughs> which is always very handy when you read a science book with a scientist. But anyway, so this is the first one on my Aussie April TBR. The next one is fiction uh, by an indigenous author or First Nation author, I think you say now, um, uh, Tara June Winch, The Yield, which was published in 2019 and was shortlisted back then uh, for the Stella Prize last year. Yeah, last year. Um, and I'm reading this also as a buddy read with Brian from Bookish. Um, Tara June Winch um, is an author who previous two novels I haven't read, so this will be my first one. Um, and it is about uh, a grandfather uh, who is about to die, and he writes sort of a memoir. Um, and But focusing, if I understood it correctly, we focus more on the granddaughter um, who comes home when she learns of, of her grandfather's death. She hasn't been home for 10 years, 
Um, and then it's a family story about grief and dispossession. Um, they are both uh, uh, indigenous uh, uh, people from an indigenous uh, first, no, first nation, I should say first nation, from a first nation uh, tribe. Um, and it sounded, um, it's yeah, I, I have been meaning to read this book I mean, at least for a year. Um, first of all, because I, uh, when I saw that she was shortlisted, this book was shortlisted for the Stella last year, and I've never heard of this author, and it sounded really interesting. And you know how it goes. Then it gets postponed and postponed and postponed, and at some point it's just, you know, uh, you just forget about it. So Aussie April is also, for me, always a perfect opportunity to go through my list on Goodreads of the TBRs and see whether there are any Australian authors that I've been meaning to read and forgot. And I'm very much looking forward to reading this with Brian. If you haven't checked out his channel, I will leave a link down below. Please check him out. He's a really... Uh, yeah, has a really cool laid back way of talking about books, but he can also be quite tough when it comes to politics. So it's, it's a good combination, I feel. Anyway, so this is the second book uh, that I want to read for sure uh, for Aussie April. The next book I'm planning to read is also one of those that I meant to read uh, and forgot or never uh, made it to read it, and that's made it to read it. <laughs> Uh, that's Jane Harper, The Survivors, her latest uh, crime fiction published last year. Um, if you're following my channel, you know that I really love uh, Jane Harper's uh, thrillers. The Dry uh, is, is one of my all-time favorites. They are all set in Australia, most of them in the outback. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I just love um, the way she combines a really good crime plot with atmospheric um the atmospheric setting the way she describes this setting is atmospheric i want to say it's my it's not you know what i mean anyway so the survivors was published last year it's a standalone and uh, the central figure is uh, kieran elliott um who there's some event that happened in his past that made him leave his uh, the, the small coastal town where his parents still live. Um, but he comes back with his um, young family um, and his parents, they struggle, you know, uh, to, to make a living um, in, in the hometown. And then, of course, you have a murder and then plot ensues from there. And that's basically all I want to know. Um, uh, I'm... You, you, I, I was talking about spoilers uh, in a, one of my recent videos, but with crime fiction, I certainly only, um, I mean, normally with Jane Harper, I wouldn't even look at the plot. I just looked at the summary in order to be able to tell you something what the book is about, because when I like an author, especially a crime fiction author, I would just buy the next book, no matter what, you know, what the plot, but that would have made for a very short summary <laughs> of the video. So I at least looked at a, um, you know, a summary, a concise summary of the plot. But more than that, I'm not going to uh, look up. And I can just hope it's as good as uh, her previous uh, three books that I read. And the next book fits this category as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Evie Wilde's book, uh, The Bass Rock, which was published last year. Um, Evie Wilde is considered an Australian author because this book, uh, The Bass Rock, is shortlisted for the Stella Prize. Uh, but she was actually born in London and grew up in Australia and now lives again in London. But she is considered an Anglo-Australian uh, author. So who am I to question that? If the Stella Prize um, long lists and short lists her, her, I can read her for Aussie April, right? And I really love her previous book, um, All the Birds Singing, I thought was brilliant. And when this book came out uh, last year, um, I meant to pick it up and, yeah, then didn't. Um, this one is historical fiction set in uh, Scotland and it. It's three women from the 1700s up to the present day who are interconnected and there is something about, there's something mysterious, um, witchy going on. Um, and again, like I said with Jane Harper, I just looked this up 
to have something to say for you so that I can tell you it's historical fiction, 1700, three women, um, same problem, same house, something happens and they, it's all interconnected. But because normally when I, like I said, when I love a book that much, uh, as I did with um, All the Birds Singing by Evie Wilde, I would pick up automatically the next book. But I'm repeating myself just to fill the minutes. Anyway, so Evie Wilde, The Bass Rock, shortlisted now for the Stella Prize 2021. And I really hope that this time around, Aussie April will finally make me read this book. The next book on my list is a reread, uh, because if you remember, you know, my ideas for 2020, one of them also was that I really want to make a conscious effort to reread uh, some of my favorite books. I'm, I've, I've reread a lot when I was younger, um, and I mean a lot, like I reread books 20 times. Um, and then for some reason, I stopped. Um, and for a couple of years, I, d I didn't reread at all, I would say. Um, and I thought that is actually such a pity because there are a couple of books that I really loved. And I'm not talking about old favorites, you know, from 20 years ago. I don't want to reread those because I was in a different, it was a different time in my life back then. And I just want to cherish that memory. But there are books now, the last 10 years or so, that I really loved. And I started uh, to reread a couple of them. And one of them, is a memoir um, by Anne Summers, Unfettered and Alive, which was published in 2019, and I read it in 2019. Um, Anne Summers is an Australian-born uh, writer, activist. Um, she worked in politics for a while. Um, she ran um, Ms. Magazine for a while. She now lives uh, in New York with her partner. Um, she was born in the 1940s, and we are we are friends. I know her because we both um, uh, headed Greenpeace. She was the chair person for Greenpeace International, and I was the chair person for Greenpeace Holland, ne the Netherlands. So that's when we met in the nineteen eighties, nineteen nineties, nineteen nineties. Um, it's I I thought this brilliant book about uh, a life lived um, in feminism, but it's also. Um, I learned a lot about Australian politics because she talks, she starts uh, during the time when she was in her early 20s um, and started working in Australia. So you, I learned a lot. I, I learned a lot about Australian politics, about Australian um, society. I learned a lot about Ms. Magazine. So that was also very, very interesting to read. Uh, but one of the things that I admire most um, uh, with Anne is that she... Um, is somebody who is always um, thinking that she can do something new, whether it's in her 30s, in her 40s, in her 60s, or now when she's uh, almost 75, uh, she is has still this attitude, life isn't over yet. And I love that. I love that about her, but I also love that spirit in the book. So I'm really looking forward uh, to rereading that. And the last book on the list is sort of, I'm, I'm probably not going to get to all the books. And, you know, the last one is one of a sort of a reserve book, if you if you will, which doesn't mean that it's not a good book, uh, but I have other priorities. C certainly books that I have been meaning to read for more than two years are higher on the list. But anyway, this one is also a collection of essays, um, Elena Savage, Blueberries, which was published uh, last year. And uh, I have never heard of this author, um, uh, but I came across it because it was long listed for the Stella Prize. It didn't make the short list, but it still sounded interesting enough, exploration of the body, uh, of understanding yourself uh, with the feminist twist. Um, it's, from my point of view, a relatively young author. Um, so I'm interested, always interested in, you know, the next generation or even the one after that, what they think of our times and how to make um, a life and how to be in the life. So it's, it sounded interesting. Um, and I'm hoping that I will read like a mad woman in April and get to all uh, those books, but I don't know yet. Anyway, so these were my 
picks for Aussie April, my Aussie April TBR. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know whether you are planning on reading some Australian authors in April. Um, in other words, whether you participate in Aussie April. I'm curious about whether you have a favorite maybe Australian author and looking forward to any of your comments as always. And I'll see you all soon in the next one.